This just coming in, we have learned that South Korean President Moon Jae-in is expected to leave his presidential office of Cheongwa-dae at around 8 a.m. South Korea time. So in a little over in half an hour's time, we'll see a convoy of president, including President Moon Jae-in, uh, driving his way to the border line of Panmunjom, the border village of Panmunjom, to meet with his uh, North Korean counterparts Kim Jong-un in the hour's time. And once we have more details, we, we will be sure to bring you the latest details on that. But for now, one of the agreements that is hoped to come out of the inter-Korean summit for Kim Jong-un to promise is denuclearization. But the complete, verifiable and irreversible denuclearization of its nuclear program, which some have called for, is likely to more than a little difficult, likely to be more than a little difficult, according to Professor So Gyun Yeol. And our Kwon Jung Ho sat down with the expert from Seoul National University for his take on the matter. Professor, thank you for making the time to speak to us today. Thanks for having me. CVID, complete, verifiable, and irreversible denuclearization. It's a term that's been mentioned a lot recently uh, concerning the North Korea's denuclearization program. Can you briefly explain what it is and how it could be achieved? When it comes to whether they can do it or not, your guess is as good as mine. Complete. It was added in uh, 2003 because at the time, North Korea was also doing uranium enrichment. So complete means not just plutonium, but also enriched uranium has to be looked into. Verifiable, of course. They should be, they meaning International Atomic Energy Agency or maybe the United States, maybe even the United Nations, should be able to check where those materials are, where those facilities are. Third, last but not least, irreversible, their program has to be completely destroyed so that they could never, ever be able to make it back. So I'm getting from you that perhaps complete CVID might not be possible. We're talking about a pretty little mass of uh, uranium and plutonium. It's less than the size of a watermelon. Now, they are spread all over in North Korea, and there's no knowing where they really are unless they tell the truth now irreversible how can he make it irreversible totally their program is already hard to reverse in fact what i'm saying is that they have already crossed the river of no return when you say they've crossed the point of no return why, why is that why is it irreversible now irreversible means that the nation should never be able to make it back. Then again, that means those personnel, actually the brains, scientists, engineers, technologists, or even technicians, have to be totally wiped out of the country. That's the only way. Just changing their jobs for a while, that doesn't make sense because they can always come back anytime. So for the time being, they could be talking about maybe disarmament, but denuclearization or dismantlement is pretty hard to achieve. We've been down this road before. We've tried to denuclearize North Korea before. Many times. Many times. Uh, what lessons can we take from the previous, uh, previous attempts to try and denuclearize North Korea? What can we do differently this time? Uh, it's, a, again, a great question because this is not the first time, maybe sixth time around. We've been dancing this dance for 25 years. So what's the difference that has to be made this time? Maybe. A different approach. It's got to be some kind of give and take. The United States especially has to give something over to North Korea. Then that might mean withdrawing, first of all, the U.S. Army, and second of all, getting rid of the nuclear umbrella one at a time. It's like a mutual deal that has to be made. That's more practical than complete CVID, which is just requiring only North Korea to do their homework. Well, I guess we will wait to see what comes out of these summits with North Korea. Thank you for your time, Professor. Thank you.